Hi there, this is Andrea Maury of Drea Renee Knits, and today I'm going to show you how we're going to seam the back of our traveler cowl to keep this nice exposed eye cord. So just so you can see the shape of this cowl, when you are all done, we start actually at this corner because we're looking at the back side, and we work on the bias. So this is our first neck edge that only has a slip stitch running up the side of it. This is our second edge where we decrease, which we kept the I cord intact because after we seam, that's what's gonna be laying on top for this really nice, pretty polished finish. So I have the wrong side facing me with the top of the cowl here, and I'm just gonna fold both edges together so that now the right sides are facing me. And you're gonna want to thread that nice long tail you left after you finished knitting the cowl. We broke our yarn leaving a tail to seam with and then we blocked. You do want to seam the cowl after blocking, especially this cowl because the stitch pattern grows. I'm just going to zoom in here and turn my work sideways so you can get a good look at what I'm doing. So we are going to begin by just bringing these two I-cord edges together. I don't do anything very fancy here. I want to kind of go in through this side. So all I'm doing is inserting my needle. So my yarn is still attached over where I finished my cowl. If you broke your yarn and did not leave a long enough tail, you can always just attach a new strand of yarn. You would want to attach it on your side that has the I-cord intact along the neck edge. So all I did is I went from the bottom up so I can bring these two eye cords together. And then I'm gonna bring it through here one more time just to really stabilize the bottom. There we go, and we are ready to start seaming. So what we're going to do is we are going to insert the needle along the first neck edge that just has the salvage. So you're gonna see what looks like just a single row of knit stitches going along this edge. So we're gonna run our tapestry needle right near that salvage so that we're leaving the salvage out, going from the bottom up. And then we'll come back to our I cord. Now our I cord was made up of three stitches. So we have one, two, and three. And it's this third stitch that we're gonna use for seaming, which makes it really easy to see where we're going. So here's my third stitch at my bottom most part of that I cord. So I just run my needle through it. It looks like I actually split the second, there we go. So just gonna run through both legs. And then I'm gonna come back over to my other side, running my needle right along the salvage. And then back to my eye cord. And you can give a little tug as you go. Back over to my salvage just weaving back and forth between these two edges. One thing I like to periodically check is I give a little tug and then I look at the top here. I wanna make sure that these are staying lined up flush with each other. If you start to notice one's kind of doing this or this, then that means you're eating up the fabric on one side faster than the other and then we'll have to even that out and as long as it's not too big of a jump you could do that by just like going up two stitches instead of just one you know or skipping a stitch on this side whatever you need to do to even that out keep in mind that knitting knit fabric is very flexible so you can kind of zhuzh it like that and it'll be just fine if it's too big of a jump you might want to undo a few of your stitches to get it back evened out because you don't want it to kind of ruche in the back. But there is some wiggle room with that. And I do find that this has been a pretty even rate of seaming where I'm not noticing that shifting happening at all. But I still like to keep an eye on it. 
And so again, all I'm doing is going up one selvage, back here, one I chord, a selvage, and an I chord. You're just kind of rotating it over, making sure you're always using the last stitch of your I chord and periodically just tugging out any slack, especially if you're using a yarn that's at all fragile when you tug on it. You don't wanna wait too long to give that tug or your yarn could snap. If your yarn is especially fragile, you also have the option to use a different thread to seam because you can't see it. So you could always use a stronger thread. Uh, but I just love keeping my tail attached. So it's one less end to weave in. Going in the I chord edge to the other side, my selvage. Again, I'm just keeping that little selvage stitch out. And then rotating my I chord so I can see the back of it. Going under that last stitch, pulling through. I'll show you one more and then we'll see how this is looking. Going up my selvage here. And then through my I cord here. Let's give a little tug. Zoom out for you so you can see the whole thing. So again, you can see how nice this is laying. I've got this part that's attached on here, the I cord, just does such a lovely job of giving this a really finished look. And I'll show you a little peek on the inside. So it's all just nice and tidy with that little salvage going up the inside. So there you go. I'm just gonna continue seaming this all the way up to the top. And then I will use that third stitch to kind of secure this edge here to tuck it under. So it's gonna look like this. And then I'll be all done. So I hope that you found this helpful for seaming your traveler cowl and happy knitting.